Hey church, uh, this is just a, a short video to do two things really, to encourage you and to, to thank you. To thank you for your continued giving during this lockdown time. And one of the beautiful things about that is because the, the giving has continued, we've also been able to continue supporting the various missionaries that we've partnered with as a church. And the encouragement is we've had a, a couple of videos from a couple that we support in missions, Dr. Ronnie and Margaret Sim, and they work for Wycliffe Bible Translation. And it's such an important work because as we've been able to join together in the, the study of God's word during this time of lockdown, it's been so um, beneficial for us. But there's so many people in the world who have no access to a Bible in their own language. Apparently, one in five of everybody in the world is still waiting for a Bible in their own language. There are 7,353 languages spoken in the world, but only 698 languages have a full Bible. So the work that Ronnie and Margaret have been involved in pretty much for their whole lives is so, so important. And the message that they're about to um, share with you, the messages that they're about to share with you, they were so encouraging to me, so I asked if we could share it on, on this platform, and they were more than happy for that to happen. So here they are, and listen to what they've got to say. Hello. I want to thank you all for supporting us. Our children have all lived and been part of our time in Inverness Baptist Church. We've worked in Ethiopia and Kenya, and while we were in Kenya, I used to go up once every year to work with the Gamo team. Their Bible is now complete and it's been waiting to be typeset for some years. The oldest guy in the team was almost 10 years older than I am, so he wasn't young. And now I'm just praying and I ask you to pray that he will survive until that Bible reaches his hands. Thank you. Well, good morning or good evening. I don't know when you will watch this. We had hoped to be up with you. Uh, much sooner in the year, we wanted to show you the Inquire Bible, which came into print in December and arrived in Zambia uh, at the end of the year. Uh, but because of the lockdown, we've not been able to come up and, and, and let you touch and handle it. It's a lovely book. Uh, you would enjoy seeing it. Sometime soon, I hope we can get up there. Uh, the senior translator, Mafaya in Zambia, uh, is harvesting with all his other country people in the west of Zambia. He's been several weeks out in the field. He comes back into town for the weekend only. And last week he had three boys from his family uh, with him and they came back into town with malaria. So he left them there and he's back out again this week. The dedication should be coming up and Margaret and I are not going to be able to be there for it because of all the lockdown on this side and also on the Zambia side. And in any case, the churches have all been closed for several weeks there by government request uh, because of the size of the gathering and the coronavirus and <clears throat> closed. And the people were told, as we've been told, to do a lot of hand washing with soap or sanitizer. The problem in Africa is that you only get running water in the towns and only in the better parts of the towns. The poorer areas and towns do not have running water. Hand washing would be a bucket with a tap at the bottom and you run your hands under the water and soap them and rinse them. This would be the same at churches uh, and of course in the countryside that's the only possibility. And so hand washing is a much more difficult thing to do regularly and often Yes, they do it before eating every meal, they do it before and after meals, but it is not done as easily as turning on the tap. And so churches were closed down for safety reasons. It's really quite interesting that Zambia's got less than 100 reported cases of the virus and only three deaths. That's amazingly likely that they're getting uh, off this. I think the reason is that Africa several years ago was was panicked by the Ebola crisis and set up systems for testing incoming air travelers at the airports. Uh, they tested them for fever and, and then they traced them 
in their contacts through the population if there was any risk at all developing. And so there were very, for this virus, the African countries were up and running very, very quickly. Um, another factor is, of course, their younger population. It's not as elderly a population as here in Europe or UK. And these things have held the numbers down, but they did, they did react very, very quickly uh, to get testing and tracing done from the airports and around the country. <clears throat> Churches uh, are being allowed to open if they make proper arrangements from now on. They must have hand washing facilities, they must wear face masks and they must stand in church one metre apart. Now that is just not going to happen. Africa is so much into handshaking when they greet people that uh, they, they, they just are not going to understand that they are not allowed to shake hands. In some cultures, including the Koya, they give a short clap as they meet people in the street and before they're close enough to handshake and that will continue. In other cultures they put their hand like this on their chest and that will do but nothing really replaces the handshake. Uh, whether the churches will open from this weekend we'll just have to wait and see. If I can turn to Ethiopia and talk about that, it's another country where we have worked and have interest. We know several people living and working there the number of cases in Ethiopia of the virus is something like 130 and I think only one death to this point. It's the same story, they reacted very very quickly to incoming passengers at the airport, tested and traced them and kept the numbers down. They're also in lockdown like Zambia and uh, people are having to work from home if they can work at all. In the countryside that will be very very different as you can imagine. But it, it has, the work has hindered translation work. Translation teams cannot gather together day by day in the office to keep their work going and office work in the capital city getting manuscripts ready for the printer uh, just are slowed down enormously. Uh, I think Margaret mentioned the Gamo translation. It's one of three Bibles that we've worked on in recent years. Gamo, Gofa and Dauro. And two of those Bibles are ready to go to the printer. The third one is not. They're still struggling with uh, getting the spelling right. And of course, this is really being slowed down by the virus. Let me again just say our greetings. Shangwe, as they would say in Zambia. Or Xavier Isteling, as they would say in Ethiopia. Uh, thank you for all your gifts and support for us, your prayers also. We appreciate that. Our work continues from home. I continue to write and as I write and finish papers they get published or put online and made available to other translators. So that work is going on and we thank you for your support in doing that. Lord be with you during this bad lockdown period.